shoulder, Legionnaires Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead and to our short survival series. It's time for our next challenge. What are we attempting to survive this time? Well, a Migo camp. What is a Migo camp, I hear you say? Well, Migos are terrible creatures, which I'm sure we'll come to know very soon. But the place that we begin in today is one of the most alien places you can imagine. The hot, humid air and the organic aspect of the structure makes one feel like they're trapped inside of a giant creature. Whatever it is, we know we need to get out before they find us. And who is us? Well, the randomizer has given us Merrily Fletcher, 55 years of age and standing at 160 centimeters. Merrily isn't so strong or fast, but she is intelligent. And so, as you can see, we don't have anything starting off. Our inventory is completely empty. <sighs> and this place that we're in, well, it's certainly strange, isn't it? There's a twitching frond next to us, glowing tendrils, gasping tubes, and across the room, there's a pod filled with what looks like organs. Yeah, we have a little bit of light in here from these glowing tendrils, and we can hear movement from deeper in. Let's have a look at Merrily and see what we're dealing with here. So, 13 intelligence, not half bad. And looking at her stats, she has some skill in archery, some machine guns, but also has melee and piercing weapon skills because she actually has training with melee weapons. Salat is her fighting style. So if we can find any bludgeoning tools or short blades, we'll be looking good. As for her other skills, down under interaction, we've got devices, health care, mechanics, social, fair bit of food handling care. We can actually see the proficiencies are in the principles of frying and battering. You see, Merrily Fletcher here was just a fry cook before all of this. And now, well, now she finds herself in this place. She knows how to brawl, so let's go ahead and select brawling rather than salat for now because we don't have anything to use it with. We're just gonna take a step out here and just listen. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Well, just in an instance, we hear all kinds of things going off around us. We hear people shouting. We hear wails. People screaming. And now we see our captor up in front of us here. Amigo guard. Yes, this, like the more common Migo, is an alien creature. This one, though, is more heavily armored. Its trunk is a shapeless mass of strange flesh encased in an iridescent carapace, from which sprout several appendages terminating in what appears to be some sort of pyramidal head. Its head is encrusted in a barnacle-like armor, aside, of course, from the bristling antennae that serve as its, we must assume, sensory devices and mouth. Yeah, not great. So, Merrily, we want to get the hell out of here. Let's have a quick look at our map. We have an idea of our surrounding here. It looks like there was a farm and some stills down to the southeast of us. There are a lot of people here. Terry, Morton, Penelope, Josh, Truman, Vance, and maybe even others, if Merrily doesn't get out of here. However, getting out of here is not going to be easy. Which way are we going to go? Well, this Migo guard has just rushed in here, perhaps detecting that someone has woken up and is somewhere that she's not meant to be. We can see that there is a dazzling light in the area, this foul-smelling air, and the air itself is hot as a sauna. We can see that it is smothering in here. We're blinded by this acidic atmosphere that surrounds us. This is not a good situation to be in, and it's a situation that we want to get out of as soon as possible. It ain't going to be so easy, though. So we're going to start to run to see if we can maybe make our way around this Migo guard. We're going to need to kind of wait a moment, see which way it's going to run. Okay, 
we have an opening. If we can run around the side and make our way up towards here, we might be able to get out. But this thing is fast. Ah, and we've been zapped. One of those antennae reaches out down towards us and actually does daze us for a second. But we're managing to get a little bit away from it. Which way to go from here though? To the left, towards this strange ventricle-like portal. We continue to run. It's the only option that we have. And we can see outside. We can see outside, merrily. It's there, the outside world. We continue to try and run as this thing slashes into her form. Sunlight touches her skin and all around her, she can see more of these creatures. Migos everywhere. Escape from this place is not easy. There is a way out. Where is the nearest town? We don't know. But for our survivor to make it, they gotta make it to some form of civilization. And unfortunately for Mira Lee, all she's done is make it easier for another. As we cannot survive with these wounds. Still, she tries to run. Taking step after step, her head severely bleeding. As it'll only be a moment from now. The last moments of her life. And that's how difficult this challenge is, starting off. Most certainly. No good. No good. And yeah, they don't take kindly to prisoners. However, ooh, look at this. A Night Stalker, which is now dead. But hey, we're going to accept our fate. Merrily, I'm sorry it came so soon for you. Surviving three minutes. Let's hope that another has a better chance in here. How we escape? Oh boy. That remains to be seen just yet. And now it's time to join our next survivor. Hilma Baron, only 19 years of age, with a passion for helicopters. Hilma was close to getting her license before the cataclysm came. All of that's gone now though. What was left were friends, and now those friends are gone too taken in the night by mysterious creatures. And so, Hilma and the remaining survivors from her group set off to find them. Knowing it would be a fight, they were armed. They were ready. They were determined to find and rescue their friends. But now, inside this mysterious structure, the atmosphere grows heavy. One by one, they're separated. And now, alone, Hilma doesn't feel so confident with screams filling her ears. She may be the one in need of a rescue soon. Yes, here we go. Starting off with Hilma Baron. Let's have a look at Hilma. Oh boy, we're already feeling smothered by the hot air in here. That's fantastic. And well, you might see that there is something else going on with Hilma. She is emaciated, incredibly underweight, near starving. Fortunately for Hilma, her reaction to the cataclysm led to some self-destructive practices. That's going to make things hard for us in here, and especially now that she is alone. But Hilma does have some things going for her. She's a rescuer here, which is the other profession that we can have randomly in this scenario. Let's see what else we have here. Accomplished sleeper, good memory, pack mule, robust genetics, weak scent, which could really help us in here but pacifist. She doesn't like thinking about violence and our combat skills advance much slower than normal. Interesting as it is, she does have some skills with rifles, which is good because we have a rifle in our hand right now. The other really interesting thing is that she has the knowledge on how to fly a freaking helicopter. So if we could get Hilma out of here, that's got some pretty big implications for long-term survival for her. So let's see Hilma, what do we got? We got an M4 carbine, we're wearing fur body armor, very interesting. And we got a combat knife sheathed away. Okay, so we're in a very familiar position here. We're gonna go ahead and wield this carbine. Holy crap, okay. Well, that took us so long to do. 
that we're nearly dead. Okay, okay, that's fine. That shouldn't have taken that long. It just completely destroyed her utility vest. Maybe in a state of shock and disbelief, Hilma just froze up. But now she has the rifle in her hands. She has the chance to save her life. But we're going to have to be fast here. We're going to take an automatic shot. We don't even have a chance to aim here. Stop aiming, yes. If I wait longer than a turn, they get a strike in. We can, no, we can't even get to 29%. Just strike after strike. Okay, 29, that's all we got. But we hit. We hit. Our ears ring as the machine gun barks. And the creature starts to flee, heavy arterial bleeding. This is just a regular Mego as well. As we can see, this is a little different from the guards. It doesn't stun us, but they still just tore into Hilma's form. We can see a puddle of its blood. Mm, hemolymph. Something different then. But as we can see, this is a creature of alien origin. Its shapeless pink body bears numerous sets of paired appendages of unknown function and a pair of ribbed membranous wings which seem to be quite useless it's odd vaguely pyramid shaped head bristles with numerous waving antennae and simply gazing upon the unnatural beast fills you with primordial dread and there is another there is another coming for us fast although this is injured the bullets must have torn through and so with that being the case let's change to semi-auto and see if we can take a shot here oh not good enough not good enough it is bleeding, but this thing is still attacking us. Come on. These wounds on our body are no good. I hate to do it, but we might, we might have to go full auto here. Just to have a chance to survive. There we go. Did we kill it? Hard to tell. No, it's running. It's at the back here. It's minor bleeding. Is it going to come back towards us? I think so. Every turn is taking so long in here. Our speed is 25. That's why. Okay, this thing is nearly dead. There we go. Rude awakening. We killed our first creature. We're in severe pain right now. This was not the greatest scenario, starting off with a character that was near starving. Because of that, our speed is next to nothing. Oh boy. We're gonna have to drop the carbine. We are going to have to take off our fur, our fur gloves. Okay, we can manage to do that. The air isn't killing us just yet. And with our hands bare, we can start to try and put pressure on our wounds. We need to stop the bleeding. Thankfully, our wound on our leg is no longer bleeding as much. We just stand here trying to stop the bleeding. Come on. Come on, come on. We wait. Our speed's still bloody 25. Okay, there we go. We're no longer bleeding. But we are just... We are not feeling great. We are not feeling great. Every step that we take in this place could kill us. Because of how slow we are. We aren't crawling on the ground. We're just walking. Our speed is so slow. I think because of, well, starving. Heat slow down the smothering air. All those things stack to mean that each step for us in this place is just pain utter pain we're seeing a lot of ammunition just on the floor here let's go ahead and pick that up we need those standing rounds we're not going to leave them although our utility vest is completely destroyed carrying them with is not easy I hate that I really do I really do Let's see if we can reload this with ammunition from the floor. Ignore the sounds. Okay. Deep breath, Hilma. We can hear Vance saying, Leg it! That's coming from the south. Maybe Lance was one of the people that she came with. It's hard to know. I hate this. I hate that every step we take is going to be... <laughs> An age for us. Oh boy. Well, if we need extra mags, we can come back here. I'm just gonna be peeking. I think even peeking takes a long time for us. Let's go to the north. 
we know that there's a strong chance that we're going to encounter other creatures. I think the best thing that we can do is just kind of wait on squares like this. We throw up. Let's peek that way. Okay. Peek over there. Yeah, I can't express how slow 25 as a walking speed is. The only way... Oh my god. There's the exit. The only way we survive this is if we shoot every last one of them. And there is the body of our first. Merrily Fletcher. Okay. We're outside, in the sunlight, in severe pain. I don't see any. Not immediately by us. Okay. Okay. Yep, we can hear Vance further in, screaming, Retreat! Retreat! I think we've got to listen to him. Hilma, we need to go. So, to our north, we have some woods. A good place to lose creatures, but also find them. There's an orchard up here, an apple orchard. If there's food, that'd be amazing. I can't believe we're leaving all of those magazines behind. But I don't think... No. Our equipment, we wouldn't be able to make that work. So, from here, with each step, we need to hope we don't see any of those creatures. And our hopes are dashed. Amigo Guard is to the south. Okay. We're changing. It's on automatic. It's shrieking to us as it runs. Okay. Ignore the piercing wail. We need a good shot here. Something hurts? Stop aiming. Ignore it. Okay. 82%. We're going to take that shot. One shot hits it. A grazing hit for one damage. We need to do better than that. We need to do much, much better. Ignore. 57%. We're going to have to go for the shot. Okay. It zapped us. But we did do damage to it. We need to do more, though, if we're going to survive this. Something hurts. Stop aiming. Yes. Come on. We can't get more than 15%. We try to shoot, it just, it flies off. 41, we'd be in with a chance. Okay, I can't even tell. It's tracking, it's tracking. Okay, that means it's leaving us alone. Let's take that chance. We start to move away from the creature, but we are bleeding our left leg, slowly but surely losing blood as Amigo starts to approach us. If we could just move further over to the west, if we could just get to the woods, our head, our torso, bruised and bloodied, we have another creature to take care of. This Migo charges, heading towards us. We know now, we know that we cannot risk shooting from a distance. We need to wait until it gets closer. And so with her leg bleeding, Hilma holds the rifle steady as it gets closer and closer. We can see our chance to hit goes much higher. We are precise. We pull down on the trigger. Good hits across the board. It is hurt, but it is still coming for us. Stomach hurts. It strikes us, slashing us across the head, tearing at our fur hat. Our head is bleeding. We are near death, but we hold firm. Damn it, another strike. Can we get more? 29, that's all we got. Okay. It's running. It's running. And so, we turn to run two. We can see Amigo Guard. And the others. Ah! And another Amigo coming from the woods. Do we take the time to try and stop the bleeding? I don't think we got the chance. The others are afraid they're staying away. But that one, it's getting closer and closer. We hear screaming yet again. The screeching creature tears across the field towards us and yet again we try to steady ourselves. we try to be ready okay more shots damn it we need to shoot pretty much straight away here a good hit enough to send it running heavy arterial bleeding from the torso 
We need to stop that bleeding on our head. We still have a little bit of life left in us. Okay. All right. We're going to drop this to the ground. We're going to drop these bloody gloves. We're going to start to try and put pressure on the wound. Okay. Yes, we could be running. But that ain't going to make much of a difference right now. We need to stop this bleeding before anything else. Come on. There we go. Our head was the most dangerous one. Excellent. Excellent work. And now, we're out of ammunition. That's it. That's all that we got. We gotta hope that that's enough. Hilma. Do we make it into the woods? I think that's where we gotta go. Our speed, though, that's making this challenge just abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. With having random characters, there's always a chance that they might have something like extra small or extra large. And what that means is, yeah, we're actually going into hypovolemic shock because of the amount of blood that we've lost as well. We can see that we have snow glare because while it doesn't look like it right now, the area around us is snowy and that's why we have so much like fur stuff on us. Let's put that back on. And let's wear the M4 for now. We're going to go ahead and draw out the combat knife. Just so that we have something in our hand. And we're going to walk into the woods. We're going to walk into the woods and we're going to try and see if we can break line of sight. If we can do that, then I'll at least be a little bit happy that we might be able to make it out of this. Okay, and now that we're in the woods, we can start to forage to see if we can find anything that we can stick into our mouth because we need to eat. Okay, plant fiber. Splintered wood. Yep, we can't eat it. We'll take it because we might be able to use that fiber for other things. Each time we do this though, it does take time. So we need to keep that in mind. We keep wandering ever closer towards the orchard. Our speed, not so bad now actually. The heat was slowing us down a lot more in there. Our mouth is cold, okay. We'll keep that in mind. Our strength is one right now. We can barely keep our hand raised with this knife in our hand. If we run into anything out here, that could be it. We found a feather. Well, 140 feathers. We'll take it. We'll stuff them into our pockets. Who knows? We might have use for them yet. Acorns, frozen. Okay. Eating them as they are, potentially poisonous. At least I think so. So we ain't gonna do it. No. As it's winter, the idea of us finding anything that we can actually eat, not great. Not great. The orchard is within sight, though. So, we continue a little further. There's a bat nearby. I mean, in a pinch, we could eat that. Especially if we can get it cooked. But all of that stuff, that takes time. We're a little thirsty now as well. The screams of all those people, still in our mind, knowing that that place, that the Migo encampment, is there. We're away from it for now, but we are by no means surviving. And I feel specifically for Hilma, for her to be able to survive in this, to be able to complete this challenge, she needs to recover. My god, her head is nearly... Okay, okay, this is bad. This is very, very bad. It's so cold out here right now that we might die from damage to our head alone. We need to be very, very cautious with each step that we take. We're feeling dizzy and lightheaded. Okay, I think at this point... It's reckless, but we just need to start to run. We need to get inside. We need to get... Oh no, we're disorientated. Every move I make right now, it's moving against me. So, yeah. Every move then was... Ah, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Is there anything that we can make out of what we have? Ah, Not really. Our head, our mouth is just too cold. That's bad news. Alright, we need to get to this orchard. For better or for worse, 
We just need to push on towards it. We don't have time. We have a lot of barren trees here. We're nearly at the orchard. Our head. We are hanging on by a thread right now. One single tick of damage. And Hilmer is dead. And we can see a zombie child to the west. And a brainless zombie. The orchard is occupied. But we might be able to make this. Come on. It ain't over yet. The brainless zombie will have a hard time seeing us. If we can get inside here, we can get a little bit of food. Where are we seeing them? We're seeing them to the northwest. So, we might be able to avoid them. Yeah. Okay. A giant wasp. I'm not sure where it is. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We continue on. As a zombie dies, we're nearly at the orchard. Okay. There's a flesh raptor nearby. To the northwest. Still far enough away that I don't think it's going to get to us. That's fine. I'm not sure what's in here. It's a luxury car. But we're just going to go ahead and move inside. Our speed... Pretty terrible, all of a sudden. Okay, there's matches. Okay, we're gonna take the matches. <sighs> what else do we have? Pointy sticks. We need food. Any kind of food. We're not gonna find that, maybe, in here. But the other structure. Yeah, our, our mouth is bad. We, we, we know, we know. Oh, it's on, it's... Our head is... It's, it's, I can't express how close to death we are. Okay, we've got ovens though, and with ovens, we can make a fire. So we're gonna very quickly try and bash this to pieces. Also, is there anything in that fridge? I sure as hell hope so. We don't seem to be damaging the table. We're so weak, we can't even damage the table. The energy colder in there is frozen. We've got some rope, and we ain't got much else. A wooden barrel. Ah. <sighs> We need to get a fire started. We need to get some kind of wood. Anything. You know what? We can burn the plant fiber. And the feather. Do not care. We're going to start a fire down here. We need that warmth. Okay. Our temperature is rising. We're feeling tired. And we breathe heavily. Sitting next to the fire. With our head so close to death. That fire might just save our life let's see it ain't getting much better than this right now what else can we do is there anything we can do having looked the fur hat it's very damaged so that's not great we might be able to cut up our underwear into rags so that we can get something out of it we're in survival we've got to do all that we can okay Yes, we're going to cut up everything. So, we'll start with that. We we don't salvage anything from it. And it's going to take 30 minutes to disassemble. <sighs> Not great. Not great. If our head wasn't as bad as it is right now, I would be fine. I'd be fine. We'd go do other things. We'd try and survive. But this very well could kill us right this second. I'm just racking my brain as to how we might be able to do better. Honestly, starting another fire, that's a good start. What can we sacrifice? Yet again, I think underwear. We're going to lose a little bit of warmth because of that, but in general, we're okay everywhere else there. So, we start two fires. Is that enough? It is to a degree. Our mouth is still very, very cold, but that's something. Hilma, you are alive for now, somehow. We made it out of the Migo camp. We have a rifle, but that rifle has no more bullets. We are not out of the woods, both literally and figuratively. For us to survive this challenge, we're going to need to get Hilma back to some form of health and to civilization. I think rescuing others from here, that's out of the question. At least it is for now. Who knows what the future might hold. Hilma, 
long may you live. Well, we'll see about that. Thank you all for joining me for the first episode in this new challenge. And what a challenge it's been so far. Oh boy, there are some dark days ahead. But let's just see if we can make it through this one first. If you enjoyed today's episode and if you're looking forward to this new challenge, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.